Right. We'll start this uh, commissioner-led discussion. I um, just want to thank everyone for um, staying <coughs> here for this very important discussion. We'll start by um, doing introductions, and then we'll make a few opening remarks. Um, Mary Jo McGuire, County Commissioner, District 2. Nicole Bretham, County Commissioner, District 1. Rafael Ortega, District 5. Did the tape go on? She yeah, put it's it on. on. She put it on before she brought it okay. Victoria Reinhardt, Ramsey County Commissioner, District 7. Jim McDonough, District 6. Commissioner Amadis Castillo, District 3. If it's not on, it's not my fault because I looked at her. <laughs> <laughs> looked at her Ryan O'Connor, County Manager. Okay. Tony Carter, Ramsey County Commissioner, District 4. Okay, and now we'll go out to the audience here. Elizabeth Tolson, Policy and Planning. Joanna Bird, Deputy County Manager. Ms. Meacham, Policy and Planning. Dustin, A2, Christian Castillo. Thank you everyone for being here. I just <coughs> really appreciate us being able to have this time to talk about, um, you know, our managing change across our boards and commissions because we've, um, we have such amazing uh, people that uh, volunteer to uh, be on our boards and commissions and we have a, we have processes that I know we're we're looking at to make sure that we're getting um, all the uh, all the people that represent our diversity and our geographic balance and things like that and so I know we're, we're having com conversations around um, a lot of our work and as we are changing uh, the way that we're doing things in our county, it, it does impact, um, it has impact on our boards and commissions. And so this conversation is about us talking about how we see uh, that that work. And um, we you know we're, we're passing naming policies and this is all affecting all of these boards and commissions. And I'm gonna just uh, say thanks for us having this discussion. I'm gonna let actually County Manager Ryan O'Connor tee it up and then uh, we'll, have a, we'll have a conversation about it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members, um, the question came to the forefront in part just during some of the ongoing co yeah. conversations that Commissioner McGuire is having as a part of the library board, okay. removed from the naming policy, I think it's fair yeah, to say. Yeah, right, right, exactly. It's kind of circumstantial that it all comes okay. to a conversation today, yeah. and I want to decouple the two because I feel like that's a dangerous assumption that could otherwise be made. Right. Um, and that's important not to do. Yes, exactly. But as we actually step back, um, and so even though it was, it's in her own conversations, I'll let you describe that with the ongoing library board mm -hmm. pieces and, and how this all comes together, it's a conversation that's bigger than any one board and commission. We've spent time over the last year talking about our boards and commissions here on multiple occasions. That's led to interactions with many of our boards and commissions, uh, talking about the future and where are we trying to go and the changes into service teams in Ramsey County. And I went to the Citizens Advisory Councils one night and um, I simultaneously got asked, we want to be integrated across the work of the entire health and wellness team and then simultaneously got told, but please don't change anything about the way we operate, make everybody else's <laughs> world change, right? And I don't mean that disparaging to any particular group, but it is this sign that as we talk a lot about change management, a third leg of that potentially many-legged stool, that's a, probably a bad analogy, beyond staff and talking about even work with the board is the piece around our citizens advisory groups and commissions and boards and these other entities that have a, an incremental or an integral, is the word I was looking for, role in, in Ramsey County's fabric. And the change feels different there, and the communication modes are different. They're not on Ramsey net. They don't get from the county manager columns. They, they don't have the same direct pipeline of connection. And, it, and part of the realization is we're going through modernization conversations with the board and the sheriff's office and internal to the organization. Um, when, I, when I was in conversation with Commissioner McGuire and then the chair, it's, it was kind of like maybe we should start to see that foundation here of how do we think about communicating that message outward, both in the near term and as we move forward? I will say, we do our best as staff to articulate that message at the point of having come out <clears throat> through the conversations around um, the conversations around boards and commissions and engagement. There's a certain level, though, to where boards and commissions clearly want to hear from the board or a board position as a part of that. that um, but for that information being a part of it, there's this belief in, well, that's what staff's saying right now, but how do we know that that message is in alignment with where we've been? And 
you can cite the workshop, but that just sounds smarmy and there's a better way to get involved in a better conversation. And so um, on, on, a, on a strategic level, it's a chance to maybe see the beginning, not the end of a conversation on that front. And I'll end with the idea that I wanted to throw out that I thought might be helpful, which is having observed the county courts committee get structured over the last, is it now two years or three years? I don't quite have the timeline on it. That is a group that is not an appointed board or commission, but has transitioned from being a group that had a function in one way in Ramsey County. And after a while, that became in some ways myopic. It was not functioning in the way that the courts wanted to be engaged with the county. And it took a stepping back and a rewriting of a memorandum of understanding and, a, and some tough time to get through to the current state, which I think all parties would deem has been more than successful and has really set the stage. And so my one suggestion to Commissioner McGuire was that could be a good grounding for everybody to maybe spend a minute on the county courts piece. I'm not sure that that narrative is shared exactly equally everywhere and um, and then it can go wherever and I think today I'm just going to sit back and listen and try and help frame it as we go. And, and I really appreciate that and I think it would be helpful for us to hear because we don't all know about that. I, I will just say speaking of memorandums of understanding you know I did present it to the library board about us developing one of those and they really wanted more information on that and so that was unclear to them what that would mean and so we're in the process actually of meeting with the, the chair of the board and her executive board uh, to talk about what that means so that we can bring it to the full library board. So these conversations are, are going on about what the memorandums of understandings are. And so I thought it, it's a good to, for us to have a conversation what that looks like to us. And I think it's a good way that we, a good chance for us to see what happened with the county courts as, as one way that, that it, it's going on. So. Commissioner Reinhardt. <laughs> well, I can give you some history on that. Um, Yikes. And, and I do think that it's important uh, to, to look at that because uh, to say that it was in disarray is putting it mildly. I mean, the, the joint committee that we had um, was not functioning in the way that it needed to, to move our residents, to move the courts and the county forward together. Um, in fact, it was going the opposite direction. And so um, it, it was so frustrating at one point that basically um, they just stopped meeting. And so the chief uh, judge, Judge Guthman, and I sat down and we had um, many spirited discussions about what we could do, um, about what we needed, what our county commissioners needed mm -hmm. as far as moving us forward and what the judiciary needed. And really what it came down to in the end, and it sounds so simple now, but it wasn't, was what do we both want? We want to improve the lives of the people in our county. Um, from making sure that people are held accountable, but what can we do to, for prevention? What can we do to make people's lives better? How can the judges and the uh, policies for the county how can they, how do they intersect um, so that we can give more information and be able to have better outcomes? It really came down to better outcomes. And so what we did was we had a, um, with that in mind, we said, okay, well, what makes the most sense? Well, what makes the most sense is the interaction really primarily with the uh, health and wellness service team. And how we deal with children, especially children in need of protection or children within our uh, juvenile justice uh, work, and trying to, again, the whole idea is make things better. Um, give the tools and the information to the courts that they need and have the perspective of, well, why can't you do that from the county level? Not necessarily understanding some of the rules that are placed on us because of funding streams. So we worked out a memorandum of understanding that was a leap of faith on both sides. Are we going to be able to really sit down and chat about the core issues and how we can make this better? And so we agreed that we would do this, I think it was for one year, and then look back and say, is this working? Because it was, uh, you know, like I said, it was a leap of faith. Um, now this was also dealt with statute and 
what was in, and we're still trying to, to fix that. But the agreement then was that we would look at it and say, is this working? Not only at the end of the year did both sides say this is working, but we want to do even more. And so it's, I think, been one of the most productive things that we have done with the bench, which is so critical to what we do for our people that are involved in this system. And the fact that it is, as we know, disproportionately uh, people of color. And so just trying to work through that. So I think when I look at what's happening now as far as our movement, in fact, I just um, was mentioning this um, to Marisol, was, and I've mentioned it to other library board members also, is we're not trying to do less. We are trying to do more and incorporate the voice of and the experiences that they have through the library system, which is part of our overall uh, services that are provided, a, a pretty essential part of it, I believe. Um, and how can we work together to make sure that when we just when we talk about transforming systems, that they're included? It's not as an afterthought. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, um, I also said, you know, we're not reinventing the wheel when it comes to an MOU with the libraries. Other counties have done that but we have something that they don't. And that is a vision for what we want to accomplish in transforming systems. And the role that the library board and the libraries will play in that. So it's not an afterthought. It's not something that, oh yeah, for the courts, you know, that we're gonna go back and say, oh yeah, that's right, we have to deal with the corrections department uh, director. Well, big deal. It, it doesn't have, the overall impact that we want on transforming systems together. So I saw a lot of parallels between these two and I know <coughs> how much more fulfilling it is for the courts to know that they have a voice in how we are transforming systems. And, and that's how I view the library as well. It's not as direct of an impact in some ways but more so in others because the the courts deals with um, people that are in the in the system the libraries deal with providing access and the support and everything for everyone um, regardless of you know where you are at in services being provided through the county thank thank you I've got Commissioner McDonough and Commissioner Carter yeah. I agree with Victoria, but I'm going to add a couple things there that I think are really important in this conversation because the first um, reaction was two things. One, protect what they had or we had and try to make what we had work, which was not good, which was very clumsy, right? Because it wasn't already working, but that's the natural tendency, right? Protect what you have. It's a known we know this, we, we, we have perceived influence, or this is where we feel we have influence, but it's actually the influence we need to actually influence what's really important to us. No, and it wasn't, but to get past that, but the first reaction was, was that, protect what we have, and then try to make this work the way we want to make it work, and it just doesn't work that way. It's like the proverbial square peg into a round hole. And to get to the, you know, move to this conversation about what do, what do we want to accomplish together? And, you know, I don't care if it's the Library Board or the Parks and Rec Commission, or the Public Health Advisory Committee, or all the advisory committees, they're all the same. It doesn't, doesn't change to me. It's our interaction with citizens or residents. It's our interaction with folks that care about particular things that we provide as a county and they, you know, they have this opportunity and that strengthens our community engagement piece here but this county does not operate in the same way it did 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago when mm -hmm. most of these were put in place to meet the needs and the structures and how we worked at that point in time and so I really do think that you know we need to visit all of these to see how are they working 
for what we need, but for what the community needs. But it is going to be hard because that's where people, it's a known, as right now, but that's a known. The way the library board functions is a known because it's functioned that way for 30 years, right? Um, it, the library system's changing dramatically and quickly. We're mm -hmm. going to open up a workforce component to the Maplewood Library. I mean, and, it, it, and it's going to change even quicker and quicker on how we utilize these, especially as the service team model really starts to gel and move forward. So I'm not picking on the library board or any of my, you know, what I want to hopefully see is that, you know, to Ryan's point, if there are questions from our citizens or community advisory groups or library boards or parks and rec commissions about where the board is on, this change of how we are looking for community engagement in a more formal way through committees or advisory boards, my hope is we can send a strong message, yes, we, we need that. <coughs> um, and two is, you know what, let's kind of stop and really pause about what do we need and what do you need as a community and shape these for the next 10 years, not shape them based on the last 30 years. But the, if that's what Ryan and staff need when they're working with the, these groups that this is coming from the board and the board is very supportive of this, but the board is asking us to really engage with you about what these look like and are they structured in the right way and do we have them you know, organized in a way that actually meets your needs and our needs. I'm hoping that as a board we can give them that message that they need that. No, we need to have that. Okay, Commissioner Carter, and then Commissioner Manager. So I just wanted to add also that this board, as uh, Commissioner McDonough has just pointed out, has been looking introspectively. I'm thinking this is what you're saying, forgive me for rephrasing it a bit, but that over time we have been looking introspectively at our work and at all of Ramsey County and have moved in directions to reorganize our work, restructure it, uh, partner work together, and ensure that we are aligning to our vision and mission and goals actively, uh, making certain that we're focused on the urgency of the moment, because we do uh, share that there are conditions within our community that we want to change. We heard this morning at the board the writing of our own story you know, health and wellness, and it's news headlines uh, that really speak to the accomplishment of our vision. We are nowhere near that, but that's the direction that we're headed in, and there's some urgency about that. So we're working to accelerate change, and all the while we're recognizing that we do, we can't do it by ourselves as a board, for sure. You know, we certainly need the care, attention, and partnership of employees that work here on behalf of all our residents of our community, their perspectives and input, participation even, in transforming the systems together so that we can better meet the needs of the community. So we're focused on, and this is a dilemma also, and we're focused on that acceleration of the change that we need to accomplish our goals. <clears throat> you know, we're aligning to the mission, we're partnering as we can, but this is a muscle we're exercising and we're getting better and better at it as we go. You know, I think we've come from a certain place of community engagement and focus on equity. We're trying to hone that and we're working to improve it every time. If we did not learn from each incident, you know, that, that would certainly be a concern. But as we think about the organization of our boards and our commissions, it's difficult for them because it is a change. And with change always comes some loss. And with accelerated change comes fear of immediate loss and impact. And we're attempting to accelerate that change, but not without the partnership. And so your example of what happened, Commissioner Reinhardt, with our court county committee is such a good example because we spoke about our positions. You know, we were able to negotiate through those positions to a better position, you know, where we are all able to 
more succinctly hone in on what we need and look forward then to that accelerated change in our justice systems, in our child welfare systems that requires the active participation and alignment. So I think that's, that's what we're trying to do as we speak with all of the boards and commissions. Um, it needs to be understood, as you said, Commissioner, that this is coming from the board, that this isn't something that the staff is really really doing, but that we have actually directed this change. Uh, clearly, we speak as one as we work toward this change. And um, so I hope that we are able to, in conversation and engagement with all the boards and commissions, work as a board through our staff know speaking for us as we have communicated to staff and making the changes that are needed in every area so I have a couple questions and then I'm gonna let County Manager and uh, O'Connor talk so I'm um, just a couple things that have been coming up to me because it's because I have been um, working with the library board or on the library board and also our, our watershed district so these are just two examples that I'm thinking about and both are in statute so that's why you know, that, that's just part of this mix, is that there's statutory things that are going, you know, statutory provisions, and, and what we want, and so I'm, I, I'm, I'm gonna throw all my sort of questions, like how, how do we deal with all of this? And then, um, so because we have statute on some, they're, they're sort of the same, but they're not all the same. So Commissioner McDonough, when you said they're all the same, there are some that are different because of statute and things like that and then when you mentioned we want our staff to, to work with them on what on what that looks like and that's what I I want to I don't know what does that process look like that like our boards and commissions want to know how to engage us I mean I would love a meeting I think we should meet with our library board we should meet with our watershed districts as a board like we meet with Commissioner McCollum like maybe once a year we do that I mean those are some of the questions that I'm thinking about like how did how does it look what does it look like to define the relationship first and then how do we continue the relationships? And so those are a lot of things that I'm thinking about. And, um, and how do we get there is sort of where I'm, I'm thinking. And I want, I want everyone to weigh in. And, and, but Ryan, did you need to add something yet or do you want to hear from other people first? I'll listen except to add one more group in so that we are talking about it all holistically. A good anecdote to bring in is CPAC. Uh, oh, wow. who came up during the budget oh, process. Right. And this happened both, I want to right. acknowledge, this happened internally to our own organization, so it's not just external things. I both had to answer the question with our own finance staff at one point during the process, and then with CPAC again, where people said, well, why are you changing the priorities for how we do capital investment? And the answer was, because we're aligning them with the vision, mission, goals, and priority setting used through the entire operating budget for the county. Oh, but like, that was a yeah. on the ground striking moment where, right. And I give them credit for in real time being willing to work that through. But it was like, well, we've always set our own priorities. And, I, and it was like, well, could you think about how we set them together? And so, like, we avoided that one, but I just wanted, that's a good one to throw in that's, as an example of how these come right. up in ways that could impact $20 yeah. million dollars a year of how we spend money that Absolutely. brings the vision to life. And, and these are all people we've appointed to, do, to, right. to think about things like this. So it's just how do we work with them? So Commissioner Fretham and then Commissioner McDonough, Commissioner Mattis Castillo. And then, yeah. So I'll say for my, my piece, I think what I'm missing is the more comprehensive view. And I know there was work done last year that I wasn't a part of, but if there was a way to get more information just comprehensively while we're talking about it, I'd appreciate that. Um, I think some of the things that I've heard come up is certainly the recruitment piece. How are we recruiting people? How do people know about that? How are we building that generation of leaders? Um, processes, how do we engage with them and how do we appoint them? I, I know when we appointed library board members this year, there were some, we changed the process a little bit, but I really appreciated that process. Um, so as we think especially about board modernization, how, how does that, that process piece become a part of it? Um, I was also able to take part in a, a session with the Alliance I think it was in October, it was before I was on the board, about um, representation and diversity on boards and commissions and as a way for community involvement. Um, and one of the messages, in addition to recruitment and processes, was um, compensation. How are we acknowledging that this takes time for people and this is a challenge for people and how can we look at that? 
um, as a recognition of this as work. Um, and then again, the, the engagement piece. I, I love the idea of annually meeting and discussing and having more open lines of communication with these boards and commissions that we appoint to. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner McDonald. Yeah, I just want to address your issue around, because I do actually think they all are the same if we start from a spot about what we try, mm -hmm. what we need, right? Because the statute, if we start with, well, this is different because there's a statute. Yeah. We're setting ourselves up for failure. We're setting ourselves to put boxes in. Now, I'll, I'll give you two examples. The the Soil and Water Commission. We, I mean, that's an elected body that we worked with, and now it's a department within a department in Ramsey County. And we went to the legislature and got the statute changed. Right? Mm -hmm. Victoria talked about the corrections thing. A lot of the issues was a 1920 law that yeah. treated Ramsey and Hennepin <laughs> and the whole rest of the state that judges would latch mm -hmm. on to and say, no, under this law, this is the authority we have, even though in 1986, the Corrections Act pretty much eliminated it, but they never eliminated the statute. So we should not define ourselves by statutes yeah, or any you. of that. We should really focus on what do we need from okay. whatever group it is. And then, you know what, if, the, if we have to go change statutes, if we have to change uh, charters, mm -hmm. if we have to change to make it work for us, that's the piece. But if we start from this statute defines the <laughs> playing ground that we have to work in, we'll get nowhere different than what yeah. we probably have right now because that's what defines what we have. Right now. And thank you. And I and I really appreciate that look. I I, I don't disagree with you. I, I it's um, right. I was just thinking. We, we will have to look at statute with those different groups. That's why I thought they were different, because we would have to look at statute. But I agree. Thank you for reframing that in a, in a way that I, I actually do support that. So thank you for that. Um, Commissioner Magnus. Well, I think Jim just said everything <laughs> I was going to say. As I, I agree. Yeah. I think that we need yeah. to set a precedence. And I wondered if, mm -hmm. you know, um, when we adopted the vision, mission, and values of the county, if the if our um, committees and boards and commissions all also adopted it, right? So if we're on the same page about, yeah. so that would be a great next step, right? <laughs> yeah. Is to go back and say, you know, here's our values. We want them to be in line and let's start there. Um, I know, you know, some of them are, are doing it and they're really embracing it and are excited about it and some are not. But I think that if we start with the basis of shared values, yeah. a shared vision, yeah. and a shared mission, we're going to get to the right place. Yeah. Absolutely. Well said, Commissioner Reinhardt. And, and that is exactly what it took mm -hmm. with the courts. Yeah. When we took a step back and said, what do we want to accomplish? Mm -hmm. And they brought things forward, we brought things forward, and, and it was pretty much, well, yeah, we agree with that. <laughs> and so once you take that, that lens off and really look at what are you trying to do to improve people's lives, you get a lot done. So yeah, I'm manager. A, I'm a values, yeah. vision piece too. And Commissioner Fredham, I will follow, I, I will let your questions fall, noted. Got them all down, yeah. we'll take care of that piece to it. Working on a compensation policy that's been that's that is an unbelievably challenging piece when you engage community in it too because you get a lot of different don't co-opt us is another part of it that you know so anyway a lot lot more to come there and I assure you it'll be back before this conversation on the piece on the vision mission values so we did because I was in the policy director role so I remember this a little bit personally I spent time taking stops at different um, boards and commissions to talk about the board's change it was an ask of the county manager at that time to share that information and so it did get presented. I think, though, on the change management side, where we're at now, um, Commissioner McDonough has spoken to it before and saying we used to have the seven goals for how many commissioners, and then we went to four, right, in that time when the board changed. Mm -hmm. So that was like the first step of change management, it kind of feels like. Number two was the next budget came through to the board, and the board said, why does every department have a different vision, mission, and goals than the county's <laughs> vision, mission, and goals? which was only two budget cycles ago, which is yeah, mind blowing me. Really very so then we went there and said, hey, I think we gotta do some work here. There are still rogue posters that some of you sometimes text me about in the county that would contradict that. I, yes, I received those texts and continue to work on that. So that's even been like, as of two months ago, we found a rogue poster. I think we are at a point though where we need to be intentional about how do you approach this conversation then with the next group. And the one difference here is the operational control is slightly different. While we want to unify the idea of one mission, one vision, one county, 
it, I, it's not the same, like, you work for me, so you have to make the change. And so the way in which this gets communicated will be important, but I acknowledge we have not had that level of intentionality happen to date. So I have the question then, oh, did you want to? Oh, I just wanted to add something okay, to yeah. this point is you know, <coughs> if we are talking about process and treatment, like embedding into any sort of interview process exactly. questions yeah. about that totally is a right. way we can shape and, and um, influence yeah. that drive on those boards and commissions. Yeah. yeah. I'm so. sorry, that just... Yeah. Maybe we could change the questions we ask for the Maybe library. Maybe for the first <laughs> time in years, yeah, we could change the questions we ask. I, I well, agree. And, I mean, as we're going through this, yeah. I think that's a really good yeah. I was writing all this really stuff down. That. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it doesn't work for us? So I'm curious as we're doing this, because I'm about to head into a meeting with our library board um, chair to talk about what does an MOU look like, you know, what are our value, what are, what are we, how, how do we visual, visualize this? So. I'm curious what, how, how we see this process working itself out. So how, right. So now we're gonna I mean, I'm working library, with Joanna. I mean, we well, only a, because I'm we heading have an into MOU that. you right now with them? No. And have we agreed that that an MOU even makes sense? Well, we don't know. I mean, we thought we should have a statement of how we work together. So it was defined as an MOU, but we don't, we haven't done it yet. I mean, they were wondering I mean, what that meant. Maybe it's not an MOU, maybe it's something else. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner McDonough. So, oh, wait. The, the, the initial advice here in this space, and this can be open to help as well, <coughs> right. has been as we thought about the success with the county court's work and moving away from statute to writing something down to help everybody clarify right. where they sit. MOU has been the term we're using, whether or not that's a legal yeah. framework Yeah, we or may not use that. I, I don't our, know if that's correct. I, I call it actually. Um, I, I, the f definition of rights of uh, roles and responsibilities kind of but it w but we couched it in MOU but we didn't define what that looked like we didn't define anything about whether that's a formality but I'm putting it out to this group that's why I'm so happy we're having this before I meet with the library yeah. board because if it doesn't look like that and I'm meeting with Joanne I mean it's not just me I mean but we want to do I, I we want <coughs> I, I want to ask your uh, you know how do you visual envision us having these conversation with these boards because I'm only because I'm faced with the library one right now, but mm -hmm. clearly we want to be consistent with all of our boards. So how do you see this? Jim, then, can, yeah. <laughs> then, just, then just, yes, quick everyone, quick. everyone weigh in on this. <laughs> you can um, and maybe we got to start from what are the different vehicles and tools yeah. we can use. Right? Yeah, I, maybe how that's how we start, with right. The different groups, because yeah. there are nuances between the groups. Sure. Yeah, you treat them sure. all the same way. Okay. I mean, dealing with 26 individually elected judges is different deal than <laughs> dealing with a board that we appoint, right? right? And so mm -hmm. I'd be careful there okay. of just saying, this works here, let's move it over here. But what are all the tools or vehicles to help us get to a spot to engage with community where community feels they're valued, their voices are heard, and it's meeting their needs, but it's also meeting the needs for us in that point in time. The libraries is more of a department of the county where the courts is an independent branch of government mm -hmm. and how we interact with them looks differently. So I, MOUs are, I mean, lots of work, but then once they're in, they, you don't change MOUs, mm -hmm. they're not flexible mm -hmm. or nimble either. So well, I just be careful yeah, with it's, that. It's where and, we were starting, but we don't have to start there. I mean, it was just recommended we look at it, but we don't have looking to. looking at what are vehicles or tools mm -hmm. or, um, Mm -hmm. structures for engagement and how do they overlay with the various points of how we're looking to community to engage with us, right? Because I would treat the library board a lot different than I treat mm -hmm. the bench. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a right. whole branch of government that's independently elected. Mm -hmm. We appoint the library board. Mm -hmm. And the library is really a department of the county mm -hmm. where the bench isn't. So I, maybe that's where we So need, we just we need to think about what that would look like differently. Spend a little bit of time with smart people yeah. about what are Yeah, I mean, that was what we thought we would start with, but we don't have to be there. I mean, that's that's clearly what the library board said. Wait, we don't know what this means. Mm -hmm. we, we want to find out what this looks like, and that's what we said. Okay, we'll come back. I think the um, story that Victoria tells about moving from protecting what we have and the fear of unknown on how we engage and how we work mm -hmm. together is the success story that we can use with the library board and any board is once you get past 
going back to the 1920 law because you think that's your protection or you get past this is what we have and this is a known. Tell us what is really important for you and aligning with our values and mission and goals and then what is the right structure to help us make sure that we're really reaching deep into the community for that input, right? Um, mm -hmm. And spending some time thinking about what that looks like. It might look different for the Public Health Board versus the Parks and Rec Commission versus the Library Board versus worse? the dozen community advisory no. groups we have Water in human services, right? Wow. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner Mattis Castillo. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you're, you're bringing up good questions. I mean, we th we did mention MOU to library board. I did because we, I, you know, I thought it was a way that we could get to where we need to be. But I think having this discussion now is um, is really helpful. Commissioner Reiner. Well, I do think it is the way to go. Yeah. Um, primarily because there is statute that defines the library board yeah. um, and some of the roles. And I think that that's mm -hmm. restrictive. And I think... The fact is, um, other counties have felt the same way, and so um, they have yeah. basically expanded the role through an MOU. Um, so <laughs> that's how come I said we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Right. But I think okay. it's so. But you know, I'm, I'm very open to exploring. Mm -hmm. Well, what could it be if it's not an MOU? But I think it had to do with the statute. Yeah. That's and so, we you know, however we get there, whatever it looks right. like, if it's an MOU or if it's, you know, just, mm -hmm. hey, this is how we're going to do things, I'm mm -hmm. fine. With, as long as we get to our, our goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the goal is making sure that we're more integrated mm -hmm. um, and not just kind of, okay, we'll, we'll inform you and you'll inform us after something has happened. Right. It's, it's not, I don't think it works for anybody, not yeah. in this day and age. So whatever it looks like, but that's how come mm -hmm. um, I think the MOU, because it's been used before, and, and my understanding was that that was in response to statute. Yeah. But so that's knows? where we were going to start. But I, I just made I that think assumption. We should be open <laughs> about that. Did Would you have changed the statute? Uh, okay, no. so Commissioner could, Commissioner, Commissioner Carter. So um, step back and go. And I did not hear. I don't think we have had an MOU in this county with the library board. No, no, no. Right? We don't. But I appreciate, uh, Commissioner, you mentioned that it has been used before by other boards. And to, to my mind, because the library is a department of Ramsey County, it was a little bit confusing to think about an MOU with the library. With the library. Right. Only Except that it statutory. is in statute. Right, yes. it is in statute. <laughs> you know, that there so is separate you think board. about that, Right. And then also, I think about who's at the library board and how they envision their role, including the fact that there is mm -hmm. a friends of the library yeah. board, yeah. you know, with whom then there is a relationship of activity that needs to be um, mm -hmm. aligned. And it really is particularly about the alignment, I don't care, whether it's an MOU, <laughs> or it's a charter, or a purpose statement, I'm not really sure. But uh, we'll get more information on that. The whole goal is to align according to our mission, vision, and goals, and to ensure that we're all working against that same uh, platform so that we're able to accelerate the work that we want to do together to accomplish our vision and goals uh, in partnership together. So thank you for putting this conversation on our agenda for bringing it forward, I think it advances us and will help us to get to the table together for that alignment. Yeah, well, I, I obviously it's a board uh, effort, a board decision, and, and so we want to be aligned with that um, how we, and how we do that. But County Manager O'Connor, as yeah. we're yeah. thinking about this. <clears throat> Madam Chair, as, as you're in your last kind of 10 minutes of time, just the most helpful part here has been the conversation. I'll come back at the end on maybe some thoughts I'll follow. But the part about the content and where you start a conversation collectively across. How about let's leave the vehicle by which you delineate the final piece yeah. to the side. Right. Joanna and I will go back and work with the county attorney's office, who on the way down today actually had a question about moving forward, how we think about JPA's MOU. They want to sit down and have a more comprehensive conversation. I, for one, and many of you have experienced this, we've never, I don't believe, had a great comprehensive approach strategically to how that gets used. We've had different attorney opinions over different time. It's something where they approach me and just ask if we could sit down and kind of reset that. 
So taking that part aside for a second and recognizing it might look different if it's a department versus a governmental entity, somewhere, some way, you have to write down what the expectations are in a way to help get to a, a, doc, a product. And I think what you're trying to do is talk through and write things down. And so that's, I just want to take the vehicle piece and say, that well heard, and I want to come back with some potential ideas on that. Mm -hmm. We can explore that part. So thank you. Thank you for that. And that's, I think it's a great way to think about it. Uh, I, I did really appreciate how we started talking about, yeah, what do we want to see? Or how do we want to see us work, working in alignment with our commission's boards, you know, whatever they look like, um, so that we can um, have the consistency that we're looking for when we meet with these groups and when we, I, I guess, next steps is, yeah, let's get a policy on how we do this. Can, can we brainstorm a little bit more about what that would look like? What, what more do you need? I mean, I feel like sure. we, we've got our vision, mission, and goals, so I think we're all aligned with that. Is there anything else that we can give guidance <clears throat> excuse me on what this on what this would on what this would look like and help yeah commissioner okay make that yeah, and i don't know if this will <clears throat> answer your question or if it yeah. even adds to the conversation but you know i think at least i'm thinking in my head right now yeah. to help us kind of get you know whatever the vehicle is but right. stay focused in on the mission vision values and goals yeah. that's we, we look to every one county, one door, one mission, right? But thinking of all these boards and commissions as um, on the continuum of community engagement, and you're looking at it at this is one one part of community engagement. It's not our only part. There's other ways we do community engagement, mm -hmm. and we need to do that, and it looks differently. But if we, it seems to me, if we start with mission, vision, values, and goals for this county and then we start looking at boards and commissions as a, on the continuum of community engagement and what does that look like? It's more formal than this part of the continuum of community engagement and it's more structured than that part but if we stay focused in on that is truly what those are, community engagement. They're opportunities for residents to come to us, especially in areas where they have a particular interest or concern or even sometimes an expertise that they can help us, you know, whether it's even getting to crafting policy or having some influence on budget because of what they bring to the table. Commissioner Carter, thank you. In terms of tools, I, I would appreciate, I would agree that the vision, mission, values, and goals form the basis of foundation. And <coughs> then I pointed out that our community engagement, would actually, which actually is a policy, and our racial equity inclusion policy, you know, should I think also be brought forward in that vein. It occurs to me also that our strategic initiatives, which derive from, you know, the look over all of that preparatory work, are all about accelerating transformation. And it may be helpful in the conversation to bring those forward as well because they are indicative of areas of joint work that we can anticipate and transform the systems together mm -hmm. and could actually make that conversation more robust um, as we talk with the various commissions committees about the work that we can do together. So I think that forms a good foundation. Again, I would leave off what's the vehicle for as we work through these conversations to determine and it may be that it's not just one, it may be different vehicles, you know, in accordance with what the organization is or what the, the partnership or committee is that we're working with. Sure, Reinhardt. Well, and I want to pick up on something Jim was talking about as far as the, the part of the community engagement process, which they are, clearly. Um, but we can also use the reach that each of those um, committees or commissions has um, and the expertise that it's on. For example, um, we're you know, transforming systems together and how do you integrate uh, mental health services with child welfare. Um, and to be able to say to that committee, this is what we want. We want to have community engagement on this subject or on this issue. Um, and they would, they would um, include their network 
In other words, give them something, it, it's something else for the committee. Hey committee, we're gonna have this, we, we're having these series of communication outreach events. How can you play a role in each of those? Who can you invite? Mm -hmm. um, and have it be uh, part of the, the assignment or the mission that they have to get more people mm -hmm. to participate more than just showing up. Actually be part of the structure of how we get people there. So mm -hmm. That's what I have to work with. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and I'm, I'm struck as we're in, in the, uh, this is going to be a process as, as we all know things are, because we, it's it's, we have our vision, mission, and goals, but the, the, the challenges will of course be in how that gets implemented, you know. So um, I guess, is there anything, um, I'm looking around to see if anyone needs to make any more comments, I'm going to give, I'm going to give the county manager a final word. Is there anything you want moving forward, like anything else you want, like I want to, Make sure in the plan we do meet with these, you know, boys and girls periodically. But maybe that's getting too specific even for you. But um, what, county manager? I'm going to let unless someone else has anything else they want to add to this. I I feel like this is the start of our conversations that we're having. I just want to um, mm -hmm. thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. I don't want to. No, no. But I think this is important for all of us. To, and I yeah. just want to say it out loud. I it's important to me, and I say it to myself all the time. You know. We titled this change management reports and commissions. But for this to be successful, we have to, are, as a board, yeah. manage change too, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Because these are our friends, these are people in yes. our community, and they're going to come to us when they <laughs> have angst about some of this right. stuff, right? And mm -hmm. we have to be prepared as a collective board to manage and set the direction for managing change. And I just wanted to say that out loud to all of you because you. I say it to myself I all the time. Right. And, right. and I appreciate that, Commissioner Carter. And then, the then, and then Tony, yeah. okay. Good. And uh, the ditto is on, and we are in an environment of accelerating change and so the management in that vein is critical. And how we do that. County Manager O'Connor, what, what? Uh, Madam Chair, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and talk with John a little bit. I think there's a there's like a, there's a couple of communication things that are lacking right now on this one, right? Because we haven't. This is really helpful, by the way. It was really helpful to actually set and talk at a strategic yeah. level on this Thank piece. Right. Um, and uh, I think the communication piece needs to identify some of what I wrote down. Today. Yes, we know we need change because <laughs> times are changing around us. The we being the board said that today. You know what do you need to be successful here are some things we need to be successful and i have i listed a number of items that are a part of that right mm -hmm. we need to see a shared vision mission goals to make the work move forward we need to see an integrated service delivery approach residents first one county one division one door one part of community engagement it's an important part but not the only part we need to highlight relevant policies community engagement racial equity highlight the strategic plan these are some of the elements i don't know if they're all i mm -hmm. i would ask to, I, i'd ask to go back and think that through with john and, yeah. and be thoughtful yeah, right. um and then so they ask the question of what do you need to be successful? Here's some of the things we need to be successful. Yeah. Who remains unheard around these tables? And then finally, um, a process by which laying out, we need to answer these questions and talk about that it's in the root of answering these that we are able to develop a stronger path forward. And alongside that, yes, the part about uh, the process, um, more consistent thought then about how the engagements occur going forward, right? The opportunity. So that'll be a part of it. The process gets there. But first, the purpose is what a lot of this is about. So I'm going to go back with John and work on that and try and get something that we can um, come back here and, and share with the board. But um, this is an important level set. And it's kind of like I continually am reminded we're on to the we're moving into the next tiers of a, of a big organization and communities change <laughs> together. And uh, I think we're entering another tier of that work and it's exciting and I think people will feel good about being asked to be a part of it because I hear that a lot of how can I be a part of it? But I also want to acknowledge there's a, there's a challenge that comes with the good that that opportunity presents. Thank you very I, much. I appreciate that. Thank you all and thanks for having these commission-led discussions. I appreciate that. Thanks everyone. Have a good, have a good caucus night.